I'm in a small Cornish town that's gained fame internationally, both for its fish and its art. This is Newlyn. Newlyn, in southwest Cornwall, has been a fishing port for at least 600 years, and to this day remains England's largest port for the landing of fish. Up until the 1960s, the port was particularly famous for pilchards, so-called Cornish sardines. It's no surprise that the fish markets are bountiful here, and you can eat incredibly well. It remains, of course, a dangerous profession, and the evocative Newlyn Fisherman Memorial by Tom Leeper watches over each departing vessel. In the late 19th century, Newlyn became famous for its artist colony, led by Stanhope Forbes. The artists were entranced by both the light and also the lives of the close-knit fishing community, many of whom lived in terrible poverty. This little oasis in Old Newlyn remembers the Rosebud, a fishing vessel that sailed all the way to Westminster to protest against the slum clearances on this very spot. The best way to discover Newlyn is to purchase the informative little book Walk Newlyn and then set off. Before I go though, time for a quick pasty from Aunt Mays. That is so good! The unassuming red and white hut next to the lighthouse carries nationwide importance. It's the tidal observatory, setting the mean sea level from which the Ordnance Survey has measured all heights in the UK since 1921. And guess where the pilgrims and their vessel the Mayflower made a final stop for clean water in 1620 before sailing to the Americas? You've guessed it, right here yet another Newlyn claim to fame. Newlyn Art Gallery opened in 1895 and I was lucky enough to meet director James Green to find out more about its ethos and objectives. I mean, Newlyn Art Gallery, the history is all very rooted in the 19th century and the movement of artists to Newlyn uh, seeking a kind of romantic idea of kind of peasant life and a depiction of that in those, those paintings. We've had a really interesting kind of uh, 120, 130 years since 1895 when the gallery opened and, and Cornwall and Newlyn has, has always been a place where um, rather than being uh, kind of anchored in that particular moment in history it's always been a place where contemporary art and artists have been attracted to do interesting work and actually right through to the sort of you know the 21st century there are lots of artists who are attracted to places like Newlyn but a real kind of there's a real sort of sense of community here and the artists make a big part of that so it's a very interesting place a place where artists and fisher, fishermen and fishing uh, families uh, still work together kind of very closely and there's definitely a sort of very vibrant scene here I think it kind of uh, it goes through sort of cycles but we're at a moment where a lot of independent artists from galleries are opening up in the village uh, there are places like Jupiter Gallery which is uh, having a really significant effect in terms of supporting emerging artists practice um, in the village and all sorts of different forms of practice so there's a kind of a real tradition around painting in, in Cornwall and that continues but there are all sorts of artists making work with film and video and performance and installation which is really fascinating too. And we hope to reflect all of that in our programming as well as national and international work alongside. <laughs> Renowned local artist Henrietta Graham spent weeks with the fishermen of Newlyn, both on land and at sea, and the results 
are captured in these evocative images that you can find along the wall of the fish market. It's great to see that the art scene in Newlyn is not stuck in the past and certainly hasn't sold out to tourism. If you don't believe me, step into the Jupiter Gallery. Jupiter Gallery is about promoting young and local, uh, well not just young, uh, any age of artists, make art more inclusive to everyone. Uh, yeah, so I'm a stencil artist. So I, uh, I put the stencil on and I smear oils over, over the stencil, then I pull it off and then I leave it for about two weeks it takes to dry, so it's a long time. But then you get this, um, and I don't mind if people touch my art as well, so you get this like nice texture on it when you touch the, you know, from the oils and stuff. I actually started doing these before the coronavirus happened, and uh, about a month before or something, I started doing all of them, and then I never, I didn't do the coronavirus for some reason. <laughs> some of the issues that, you know, Cornwall faces, like the Airbnb, um, trying to bring some awareness that you know it's all being taken over by Airbnb and holiday lets. And My whatever. art is to do with recycling, upcycling. It's about how much waste we have in society. I make all of my things from stuff I find on my way home what, or when I'm wandering about I see how much waste there is everywhere um, and I can't help myself I pick things up and take it home and make it into something. This is made from, this is from up the fields where I live. Um, lamps made from old TV rental meters. Mm. You put a sixpence in to turn to watch the telly. My jewellery is all from inner tubes, bicycle inner tubes. So I found this image minus the hazmat guy in Newland Charity Shop. And uh, so I took it back here, undid it, cut this little guy out, stuck him in then put my name next to O Avery and uh, put now it's in the gallery again so upcycled it and uh, hopefully O Avery will come in and enjoy it as well, I hope she doesn't mind. <laughs> <laughs> Now is it possible to find the perfect combination of fishing, art and sustainability here in Newlyn? Well yes, it is. So I'm Stevie, I'm a Newlyn girl, I grew up in Newlyn um, as did my father, my grandfather and generations back we can date our family back to about 1700s in this area. So this is gillnet, this is what um, our gillnet fishing boats out of Newlyn use. Um, and it has a short life expectancy. So it's up to about six months and then it can't be used. So basically what happens is that it then gets uh, put into landfill. But what we do is we've got a company locally here called Fishy Filaments that reduces it down to a micro pellet, which then gets formed into a filament. So that's 100% gill net. And that filament then gets fed into a 3D printer. And that's when I got really excited because I then was able to produce my um, a series of lights. This is a candle holder and there were two other sizes that came along which were electric um, and I put my Gaiataku fish onto it. So got my Gaiataku artwork is fish that I get from Newlin. I put the paint onto it, put the paper on the top, create a print and then embellish it and then I eat it. So my Gaiataku fish I've then put onto here. So the narrative for this is the net that caught the fish that I printed and ate that is now a picture on the wall is being lit by the net that caught it. Honoured to be invited by Selfridges last year to be part of their Project Earth um, with my um, uh, gill net fishing lights, see into the light I call it. It was caught and cooked in the morning. We were moored up between Briar and Tresco and I went and got the, the crab from the Amanda Pender and then went back onto the boat and put the paint on it. And as you can see, this is the actual crab there, like that, that I printed. And then later that night, 
we sat in front of Fraggle Rock and ate the crab. So everything gets eaten. So that's the actual crab from, from the Isles of Scilly. I've seen Newlyn go through the good, the bad and the ugly and it's just wonderful to be a part of the way Newlyn is now um, where it's still a little bit gritty and rough around the edges but lots of locals are now taking their crafts and what they can do and especially like you know for example what I do here um, and we're making our businesses about Newlyn in Newlyn. Mm -hmm.